Hello, and welcome back to another From the Workshop. I'm your host, Brandon Hart, and we are, once again, here in the Nimble Link Nerd Lair, in all its glory. So this time, we want to talk about something that is essential to the process of getting started with your cellular IoT device. In this case, a NimbleLink Skywire modem. So we like to focus on the idea of developing a device and figuring out your I/O and is it going to be microcontroller based or is it going to be, you know, Linux based or what are you going to do? How are you going to make the thing work and and do all sorts of cool things like that? But the thing that you have to remember is that you could have the best designed, coolest. Uh, cellular radio inside of this thing and, and run with a NimbleLink Skywire modem and, and being awesome. But until it is connected to the network, to the cellular network, you, you're like, a, you're like a, a, a fancy locomotive with no railroad tracks to ride on. So yeah, so basically we gotta, we gotta make sure that you have some tracks, that you have the ability to get on those tracks and, and get to your destination, send your data. Okay, this analogy is breaking down a little bit, but the idea is you gotta have your hardware, which is our Skywire modem, and you gotta connect it to the network. So let's talk about what it takes to get connected to the network. Cause I know a lot of people who are new to cellular may not be familiar with this process. Okay, so first of all, you're going to have your devices here. There are really two main types of devices that you're going to be connecting to the cellular networks as far as how the process goes. There are your CDMA devices, um, which are like uh, Verizon and Sprint uh, and, and US Cellular and a few other uh, smaller carriers here in the US. Um, it's the 2G and 3G networks that are from them, also known as 1XRTT and EVDO. Um, so for example here, we're showing the 3G NimbleLink Skywire modem for the Verizon network specifically. And on these devices, there is no SIM card. So let me just make sure this is clear because this question comes up a lot. CDMA, no SIM. Okay. So, like I said, I want to make sure that's clear because actually, if you look at the back side of these two Skywire modems, I'm just going to put them side by side here. This one is an LTE modem, also for the Verizon network. This one is CDMA. Notice that there's no SIM card slot on this one at all because this one, the CDMA one, just uses this little device identifier here or the device ID, which in this case is an MEID. And, uh, and that's the number, that's the only number you need to know on a CDMA device. So when you go to light up service, you're gonna provide that MEID to whatever carrier or, or third party service you wanna to have to get that set up. So again, in this case, it would be Verizon or you could use our NimbleLink developer account. Either way, it works perfectly fine. You'll fire it up, get a line of service, which means you're getting a phone number that is assigned to that device. That phone number is then what is tracked in the billing system and allows you to access the uh, the device or sorry the uh, cellular network okay so once you've gotten that established and you'll have to make some decisions about private or public and uh, dynamic or static IP addresses and that kind of thing but once you have all of that figured out then you're going to go through the process of actually programming the device this again is where there's a departure on the CDMA versus LTE and, and uh, GSM side on the CDMA device, you're going to issue an AT command and essentially dial a phone number. And that is to initiate the over the air service programming or OTASP process. Okay? So again, CDMA device, and specifically for the Verizon network, the Sprint one's a little, little different, it doesn't actually use this. Um, you're going to type in ATD star 22. Two, eight, nine, nine. And then on ours, uh, the way that this will always work is you put a semicolon at the end, hit your enter key and off it's going to go. And it's going to give you some messages back. So it's not just blind. It'll actually report back uh, pound OTASP colon zero, one, two, 
and then if everything goes well, it'll end in no carrier, which just means that the other side hung up, and you're done. Power cycle that device, get to going, and you're off. So that's the way that's going to work. Okay. I don't want to spend a whole lot more time on CDMA. CDMA is kind of a short-lived technology at this point. It is different, so we needed to cover it. We do still make them available. So that's what that's going to look like. All right, so let's move on. Let's move on to kind of the other side of things, the other world, uh, which is the 3GPP technologies. And those are going to be things like LTE, HSPA, Edge, GPRS, those types of things. Um, essentially, these are the SIM based technologies. So again, if I take this LTE modem, flip it over, you're going to see there's a SIM card in here. So in these, you actually need two different pieces of information. The first thing you need is the IMEI, which is this number right in here. Again, very similar to the MEID you had from before. But you're also going to need the SIM ID. <coughs> and the easiest way to find this on devices is when you get the device, you'll get a SIM card. It is that number that's printed right there, or in a much easier to read format, is also on the back here. So that is the number that you're going to use. You need both of those to be able to light up one of these devices. Okay. Again, we're going to get into the idea that you have to pick a public IP address, a private IP address, a static IP uh, where it's always the same every single time you connect, or a dynamic IP that is issued each time you start a new session. You have that choice. Uh, and a lot of times, depending upon the carrier, uh, that will make a big difference on the APN that is actually used. Okay, so we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit. Um, so same process, you're gonna go through IMEI and uh, SIM ID, also known as the ICC ID. Provide those to the carrier or on the go.nimblelink.com website and fire up your line of service. Great, now you've got a line of service. You've got a phone number to associate with your device. You've got a track for your locomotive to ride on. Um, but you're not done yet. You still have to actually program the device so that it will connect to the network. So here's how you do that on those, those types of devices. Good news here is even though there are lots of different types of devices, again, the GPRS, the HSPA, the LTE, the CAT-Ms, the CAT-1s, all that kind of stuff, they all use a standard set of Hayes AT commands. So to configure your APN, all you need to know is the AT command for that. And it's kind of a long one, so I'll just write it here. It is AT plus C G make sure I get this right I actually wrote it down off camera <laughs> C O N T that one right there so this is the one that if you put a question mark on here it'll it'll you'll actually request what it is um, or if you hit an equal sign there and then actually type in the values as as you should you're configuring the PDP context including the APN uh, in this case. So what is that APN? Glad you asked me. The APN can vary from carrier to carrier and from service to service. Um, so I mentioned earlier you have public, you have private, you have uh, static, you have dynamic. So on again kind of talking about Verizon, that's the one we're showing here. Um, in this case all of those things make a difference in what APN you get. In some cases, on some carriers, um, both here in the United States and abroad, there's pretty much just one standard APN. You use that APN, you're good to go. Um, some example APNs on, uh, on Verizon is the, the public dynamic APN is VZW Internet, all caps, just typed out like that. Um, it could be MW01.VZW static. You know, there are lots of these types of, of APNs. Um, one I do want to point out, though, if you sign up on the go.nimblelink.com website, and we're going to put it right down here. I think this is the lower third. Um, but it is the APN for the, Veri the Verizon private network setup that Nimblelink uses. So if you just light up a line of service on our account, 
uh, this is the APN you need to program into your modem and it is N-I-M-B-L there's no E N-I-M-B-L-I-N-K dot G-W-1-2 dot V-Z-W-E-N-T again a lot easier to read it right here on the screen uh, but it's a good one to know if you're using our account okay so maybe not the most exciting of topics but uh, one we get a lot of questions about one that I hope is helpful um, so that's kind of how to get things up and running uh, again CDMA there's no sim there's just the MEID pop that into the system get that back do the over-the-air uh, service programming call and restart your device you're good to go on the LTE devices you need two things you need the ICC ID also known as the sim ID and the IMEI which is your device ID those two numbers provide that get your mobile number assigned to the, your line of service then go in configure your PDP context using this right here with the appropriate APN again set that and off to the races you go there's provisioning all right so thank you very much I appreciate you joining us for this episode of from the workshop Please do subscribe, helps us out a lot. Make sure that you don't miss an episode as well. Lots of helpful tips in these series. Um, and, uh, and feel free to leave some comments. We'd love to hear what you guys think. So uh, until next time, I'm Brandon Hart. This is From the Workshop. Thanks a lot, have fun developing. It's here, it's here, M1 is here. Qualcomm chipset is the fundamental building block of this cellular radio.